Hey, what's up, Spirit Family? Welcome to Spirit Love. So I just want to give a special thank you to all my viewers that helped me get to over 450 views on Facebook for my last Body Positivity vlog. So thank you so much, you guys, for joining me on this journey and helping to support me. I hope you guys can continue joining me because this is a really, really amazing journey and I really want you guys to be a part of it. So on this vlog, I want to talk about how to overcome struggle as well as how to overcome insecurity. Now the best way for me to do this is just by talking about my own personal story. So for me, I've actually learned how to overcome a lot of my insecurities and a lot of my struggles, but it's been a very intense journey for me. When I was growing up, I had a lot of struggles just because of the fact that my family moved around a lot when I was a kid. So I was never in like one middle school or one high school for very long. And I was always a new kid in school, um, which made it really difficult for me just to get along with other people as well as just to adapt. And I noticed that when I was in middle school, I had a very traumatizing experience. I was in a class and I remember one of the kids just kind of looking at me and just thinking like, I want to... I see this guy as a target, basically. Um, so as soon as the teacher left, he went up to the podium and he started looking at me and pointing at me. And he just starts telling everyone, that guy is a faggot. And then I remember just being like shocked. I didn't know what to do. I was just frozen. And then literally minutes later, like I just saw the whole entire classroom start screaming the words, faggot, 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 and just pointing directly at my face. And I just remember feeling so overwhelmed and I just, I was in shock and I, it was just a horrifying experience. And um, it, it just really, really kind of got to me, you know, not kind of, it got to me a lot. During that time, I was just such a young kid and um, I didn't know how to handle it. So I progressed to high school and I remember a lot of those kids, they followed me to high school because um, we went to a, a nearly located high school. And then I remember they got a group together. So there was a group of kids that came up to me and they said, ah, gosh, sorry, this is so hard for me. Um, so they came up to me and they said, uh, you should kill yourself. We don't, <laughs> uh, yeah, so. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna, I can do this, I can do this, so. Um, they came up to me and they said, um, you should kill yourself. Um, no one likes you here. You're a faggot. Um, and it was like a big group of kids. It was like a last 12 or 13 kids that came up to me and um, just told me that, that if I killed myself, that they would celebrate my death. And it was, it was something that I should do. And the whole entire school hated me. And that was just um, the best thing that I should do for myself. And the best thing I should do for everyone else is to just take away my life. So, I, I had a really hard time during that process. I literally just went numb for a very long time. I... Um, I, I knew there was a, a two way, I knew there was two ways to go. Um, either I become a part of the gay statistic at that time, which is anyone that had gone through what I went through would either go into substance abuse or, um, or kill themselves or I can go to other road and, um, try to you know try to try to find myself worth again and try to overcome this process and thank the lord that i went the other way because i almost i almost went through the path where they had me you know i almost went through the path where where they had the power and thank the lord i didn't let them have it because i can't even imagine you know, and there's so many gay men at that time and so many just LGBTQ people at that time that went the route where they say came to the hate, the homophobia, the pain. And um, I'm so thankful I'm not one of those people and I feel so bad for those people. So sorry, guys, I just, you know, I haven't thought about this for a long time. So 
just talking about it just it's just really you know it's a lot but I want to share a story because I know that there's a lot of people that had gone through a similar struggle especially during my time growing up so I didn't I didn't want this to be a situation where I'm trying to hide my struggle I think that I wouldn't be who I am without the struggles I've been through and I don't regret anything the first thing I did to overcome a lot of the homophobia and the hate and um, the lack of worth that I felt during this process was that I needed to find resources so that was the most important thing so what I did was I started researching you know gay uh, community centers and nonprofits that I can go to where I can actually relate to other people's struggles and um, help find some support so that was the first thing you did so if you guys are feeling overwhelmed and you guys are feeling like you're struggling look at your resources don't give up you know there are going to be people who are going to support you there is another path that you can take don't feel like you're going to be helpless i know it feels helpless in the moment i definitely feel helpless many times during this process but if you can go out there and do the research that's really important another thing that i did was um, trying to find role models. So I started reading stories of other gay men who went through very similar struggles and there was a lot of gay men that went through the same struggle as I did and that helped me a lot just learning how to identify each other's struggles and to feel like you're not alone. That's the most important thing. Never feel like you're alone. There's always someone who's going through another struggle very similar or the same as you. The other thing that I did was learn how to reprogram my mind because I knew that for me I accumulate so much poison, right? There's so much emotional poison I took on from those people. All the homophobic language, all the hate, you know, all their negativity. It just impermeated my system. And the best way for me to release a lot of the negative energy was by creating positive affirmations. So each day I woke up and I told myself, you were created here with great worth. You know, you are amazing. You know, you are powerful you are worthwhile and I know it feels crazy to talk to yourself when you first start but then you learn how to adapt and you learn how to reprogram your mind to think more positively about yourself because that's your truth you guys all this ego all this hate that's all a lie that's all facade that's just people reflecting their own hate on you so never let their hate impermeate you yes their words are powerful I'm not gonna lie about that they say words can't hurt you words can hurt you People's actions can hurt you. But guess what? Your words are 10 times more powerful. So don't ever let anyone have your power. All of us were created with amazing, amazing worth. So you have to create that worth for yourself. If people are not gonna help you create that worth, you have to learn how to create that worth for yourself. And that's what I did. So I created positive affirmations on a daily basis. I learned how to, to think more positively about myself. I learned how to create positive language for myself. I learned how to release a lot of my limiting beliefs. As no one can determine your worth but you. You guys can do the same thing. I encourage you guys, whenever you feel like you're worth less than what you actually are, tell yourself, I am worthwhile. Whenever you feel like you're less attractive than the next person, tell yourself, I am just as attractive. Stop yourself before you finish that negative sentence and replace it with something positive. That's the most important thing you can do throughout this movement, you guys. All right, you guys, so let's go into the vlog. Um, so today I'm going to Hippie's Brew, which is a coffee shop in Hayward, and they make really, really good mint-flavored coffee. So I go there and I get, of course, a vegan coffee with almond milk. Um, but what was really, really amazing was I went with my friend Jordan, who is this awesome guy. We have a ton of fun. We're spiritual brothers. Um, and we started meeting these people, and these people were like, random people that we just sat at by a table and they had such inspirational stories. So I'm gonna put that video on here right now. I want you guys to know ahead of time that the audio is very bad on this part of the video, but I want you guys to listen carefully because the stories that these people tell are just truly, truly inspiring and amazing and it's worthwhile. So here with Jordan. <laughs> We're getting some quick coffee before we start working on the project because I am still so sleepy, so we're here at Hippie's Brew, pretty cool spot. 
Uh, in Hayward. There you go. Check it out. <laughs> it's been a minute since we've been here, though. Yeah, it's been like, I'm gonna say a little over a year since I've been here. It looks, still looks good. The food still smells amazing. I'm very excited to see what happens here. There's Jordan showing off the goods. <laughs> So we're just having some good company. We just randomly met these people. What are your guys' names? Hi, I'm Vanessa. Hi, I'm Krishna. Ryan. I'm ask you guys all individual questions. Just kind of gauge your guys' perspective. So, Ms. Vanessa, what is your definition of a life worth living? Question number one. I know a life worth living. Um, a life that you live for yourself. Um, you do things that make you happy. Um, one filled with like a lot of positivity. Um, I think and no matter what you do, as long as it's happiness, positivity, I think that's the life of living. For me, it's traveling, being with family, not having, yeah, like nice things, but not having like a lot of material things, more experiences. Like I'd rather drop a grand on going to a restaurant with like, my family and friends and having like an amazing time than buying like Dude. Yeah, thank you. Thank Super you. grounded, love it. Thank you. Love the beast with it. Very nice. It's all about the fam fam. Same question. Yeah, same question. Okay, same question. Um, I'm a little nervous. Like, I think by the end of this year, I gotta it involves kind of living the, uh, as a better version of yourself, like the best version of yourself. Yeah. Along the similar lines, we're, we're related, so we kind of have similar mindsets. Um, but uh, I recently had like a medical like experience happen. <laughs> I got diagnosed with cancer like six weeks ago. Um, going through treatments right now. Um, no, no, I, like, I didn't know. I didn't know whether the blog would have it. Um, but basically, what that saw me go. We had a nice conversation before the video started about social media, and basically, along with everyone else. And kind of like living for yourself, I this experience has taught me to. So like, I, I also like got rid of a ton of social media after this experience. So like, I realized I I didn't make like a Facebook post like hashtag cancer free or whatever. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, 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 I realized that 95% of the people on my social media I stopped giving a fuck about like two years ago. Um, and what I did appreciate was like during my surgeries and all that stuff where I, I, had, I had no idea, like, I obviously knew like my family would be there for me when, when all my aunts and uncles came for my surgery. I basically had to talk with them afterwards like, why does it take a a tragedy or like someone to get sick for us to come together like no fuck that just come together all the time like it just it just made me like start highlighting what's actually important like me meeting my cousin 30 minutes away to get, get food have a nice little Sunday brunch like that's what's fucking important this other stuff is kind of bullshit and like if I that's, that's one takeaway I can do like and have from like getting over this like cancer thing so. So next thing I did was go out with my friend Angelo. So me and Angelo went out for a hike and it was great. We got to connect as spiritual brothers and we had some good food. So hey, what's up you guys? I am just going out to eat with Angelo. Say what's up? <laughs> Asian peace sign, dog. Asian peace sign. Yeah, we just did a vlog on success strategies and um, in the park over here in Fremont. So we're just getting some food. I got a egg roll plate. <laughs> egg rolls, noodles, and veggies. Got some more. Yeah, sriracha, man. I some of this one. Some sriracha. And then, where's this? Dump that in. Mix it up. How's your food, man? It's amazing. Amazing? I don't know why, but. Because you're so hungry? Right. Turn up the noodles. And I think the sauce is like what seasons the noodles. So instead of like stir frying the sauce, like uh, most like Chinese dishes do or like some Asian dishes do, they actually have the sauce on the side and just mix it in. And it's like a textural thing. So you have like some of the, the cucumbers, um, the carrots, 
the crunchy egg rolls. Some of the noodles. Yeah, not bad. Egg roll. She's pretty good here. Yeah, I'm just devouring this. I'm not really talking much. <laughs> <coughs> I know we're both hungry. I didn't. I told Angela I didn't have any breakfast. I kind of just like went straight to a men's meeting and just went straight to you. Walking through the grassland area right now. Angelo, single Ray Domingo. I told him it was to be his wee man. Every shot. You're gonna... <laughs> Every shot. We know what his leg start personality was. So, all you uh, Scandinavian chicks, all chicks, this right here. <laughs> get, get it. What's your YouTube get demographic? It. So, we're hanging out today, me and Angelo. We're just doing like a success vlog and a hike. We had some really great, amazing uh, Vietnamese food that we had on a whim because we we actually were trying to look for some uh, what kind of food were we trying to look for? Burmese food or something like that. But it was closed for lunchtime, so we had some Vietnamese food, and the restaurant was bomb. So I was like, hey, it's good. So we're just going on a hike right now, short hike. There's Angelo right there. And I'll show you guys some pan shots of where we're at. So if there's any one of you up there um, <laughs> that's looking for someone that has like very little, little cardio stamina because he's obsessed with not losing his gains, I'm your guy. <laughs> you're, you're Scandinavian. Loves in Scandinavian women. Yeah. Holler at Angelo. Yeah. He's a good looking Asian guy, right? Two, two of them up there. Yeah. All right. Look at these rocks formations. Public CTA. <laughs> so. It's awesome. You gonna climb up? Do the power shot. <laughs> Alright you guys, it's the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Again, I'm new to YouTube, so I could really use your support. You can be able to support me on Patreon, where I'm trying to raise money for my fiance. That would be amazing. Your guys' support and your love means so much to me. And remember, I do weekly videos every weekend on a daily basis, possibly even sooner. So stay tuned for more videos, and I hope you guys all have a blessed day. Namaste.